what's up meditators how are you i hope you all are filled with the joy of the lord that joy goes beyond happiness goes beyond excitement it's the joy that only god can give no matter what happens no matter what comes your way you have joy in your heart because it comes from the lord and what the lord gives you the world can't take it away so i hope you have that kind of joy and if you don't we're going to get some because God didn't put us here to fear. He didn't put us here to worry, to be anxious, but to have joy and to walk in our purpose and to keep our eyes stayed on him. Lately, I feel like God keeps stripping me from a lot of things and then restoring it back to me. I be on the up and up. Everything is going good. You know, everything is flowing. And then I feel like a lot of stuff started to get taken away from me. And God restores it back to me daily. He's doing this to keep me humble, to keep me dependent on him and not the things that I have. And to continue to involve me and make me stronger. So it hurts. But at the same time, God has my back and I want to evolve more than anything. And I want what God has for me more than anything. So if he has to keep taking things away from me and then restoring it back to me daily, let it be. If I come out of this with a stronger, better, improved mindset, then I'm here for it. It's hard but we can get through it with the word of God. That's why you have to constantly stay reading your Bible, constantly talking to God, because he's going to get you through every obstacle with joy in your heart. I am going over some scriptures about feeling anxious right now, because my thing is, I know that God is going to supply my every need. I know that he is with me. I'm just anxious for it to happen. And everybody knows that that anxiety, being anxious, it doesn't feel good. You know, it, it kind of makes you just like on eggshells. It's like, I don't know what it makes you like. Like, I probably, on, probably is on eggshells, maybe just anxious, just exactly what the word is. Just very eager for it to be over. I had to learn how to just sit in it. I do trust God. I had to wait on the Lord and I know he's going to show up as he do all the time. I had to calm myself down and do what I need to do so that I'm not so eager and just enjoy my day-to-day -day life without worrying about tomorrow because God is going to take care of tomorrow and he's going to take care of today and he has already shown me that time and time again. I know a lot of times when we have issues we always say well you need to pray about it you need to pray about it. that's what we tell people that's what we tell ourselves. We might get tired of hearing that but the more you get close to God you won't get tired of hearing that. You won't even have to have somebody to tell you to pray because you'll already be praying every day. God gives you so much peace when you pray. When you're done praying, he gives you peace as you go on about your business, about your day. God gave this to me. It's pray, praise, faith, work, enjoy your life. Pray. Praise, praise him, sing your gospel songs, thank him, be humble, pray, praise, faith, have faith, work, work diligently, enjoy your life in that order. My thing is sometimes the working, working diligently is where sometimes the problem can come in because we can get lazy, we can get tired of, you know, constantly doing things and working diligently, we get tired. But if you have a goal and if you know what your purpose is, and if you don't know, you gotta figure that out. Really easy to figure out what your purpose is. It's just what you're good at, stuff that you naturally do with ease things that bring you joy and I don't care what it is if it's something that brings you joy and you are good at it that is your purpose and you do it with ease that is your purpose don't look around that build on that research it pray about it ask God what your purpose is 
But once you find out what your purpose is and you are working on your goals, I know my purpose and my goals are important to me. So if in order for me to reach them, I have to have faith and I have to work diligently. Regardless of how I feel today, when I think about my why, why I'm why I'm working so hard and where this is going to lead me, I have to step out of my comfortability and continue to push. Do not let your feelings because I don't feel like it today or you know whatever it is do not let that overpower you not working diligently. We have to work diligently if we want to reap the rewards. Yeah, I have to tell my I have to force myself to go out and work out. I have to force myself to get in my office sometimes. And it's just sometimes because after you know you you working on a goal and dealing with everyday life, it can be tiring. It's like I can either do either or you know what well, i would prefer to do either or i would per i would prefer to just sit in my office and work on my business all day but i have other things that i need to take care of and sometimes like my job y'all i be so tired when i get off work i don't want to do anything i don't want to work on my own personal business and my own stuff i be straight tired like after dealing with you know my job having to maintain my house you know um just being a wife all that stuff a dog mom having to walk my dog in this heat it's just so many things that and then on top of you trying to build a business like that's what my heart is that's where my purpose is is my business important enough for me to pull through yes it is i have so many reasons why it's important for me to pull through i need to do it regardless of how i feel i need to make time i need to work diligently in my personal life in my business life in my family life because it's things that i want to see happen i want it to be blessed if i don't put the work in it's not going to get done small efforts every day praying to god about your concerns or whatever it is he will give you direction strength resources and all that and you will be able to keep going and give you time to get those things done sometimes i pray to god and i say lord i feel like i don't have enough time to do these other things that i want to get done and do you know god would arrange my schedule so that i can have time to work on what i said that i need to work on like i see him do it plenty of times i'd be like lord i want to work on my business but i need to make some money and then i get a phone call most of the time it'd be my husband he'll call me he'd be like babe i got some money for you and i'd be like thank you jesus and then i go home and i'll work on my business Pray to God for the things that you need, even if it's time. Use your time wisely. God will bless you with whatever you ask. If it's in his plans, if it's in his will, and you bring it to him, he will bless you with what you ask for. Next, I want to talk about anxious. My thing is, I have faith that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. I know he's going to do it. He's done it plenty of times but i'm anxious i'm very eager so today i want to go over some scriptures with you guys that will help us to not to be so anxious okay we didn't already pray we didn't already praise god we have the faith we're working diligently and we're trying to enjoy our life but we're so eager for it to happen even though we know it's going to happen, we're too eager. We need to calm that anxiety down. So let's read some scriptures that's going to help with that. And this could be anxiety that is pertaining to broken relationships, concerns about people we love, relationship issues, jealousy, financial concerns, health concerns, fear of death, sin, or a combination of these things. Philippians. Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 4 through 7 rejoice in the lord always and again i will say rejoice rejoice means to have joy in the lord to feel joy when you think of him always when you think of the goodness of god when you are feeling like 
eager and anxious for something to happen, you we already have the faith, but this is something that we can do. We can rejoice in the Lord when we, we can think about the goodness of God. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone so instead of speaking down on your situation let everyone know that i am rejoicing in the lord yes this and that happened but i trust god i rejoice in the lord he is so good and he never let me down that's how you talk about your situation to everyone the lord is at hand do not be anxious about anything but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Once you let your requests be made known to God, he's going to give you peace that surpasses all understanding and your heart will be guarded and your mind will be in Christ Jesus. So you have to pray whatever it is. Say, Lord, I'm feeling anxious today. I pray that you would take it away and that you will help me to have a blessed day and enjoy my life. Once you give your request to God, he's going to give you peace. And that peace will surpass all understanding. It will guard your heart and your mind will be in Christ Jesus. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. Chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Come to me, prayer. Go to God, not your friends, not your family, not your mom. Go to God. Come to me, all who labor in heavy laden, that working diligently, and you feel like you're not getting enough rest, and that you don't have enough time, come to God and he will give it to you. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in the heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So come to God. That working diligently, you feel like you need some rest, you feel like you need time, come to God and he will give you that. He will give you rest, he will give you time, and he will also give you wisdom, direction on how to obtain your goals. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. And now this is talking about how you're dealing with your brothers and your sisters, okay? Comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace with people that are around you, and that's also going to give you peace, okay? Don't be frustrated with folks. Live in peace, and comfort one another. And that's going to give you peace. That's going to slow down your anxiousness. When you learn how to forgive. And comfort one another. And live in peace. And the love of God in peace. Will be with you. I know every issue is different. But bring it to God in prayer. You may have to step away from that person. And love them from a distance. But you don't get out of character when it comes to your love and comforting someone, being reasonable, going to God and he will give you direction. He will give you direction on what to do, how to fix broken relationships, but always keep love in your heart and always try to think the best of people in the best of a situation. And I'm not going to say try, do it. It's going to help you. Matthew 8, chapter 23, verse, verse um, chapter 8. 23 through 27. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there across a great storm of the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? 
Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even winds and sea obey him? God is good. God is good. So the same way that God rebuked the seas and the winds, we need to rebuke anxiety. I rebuke this anxiety in the name of Jesus. Have faith because the same spirit that is in Jesus is in us. That means we have authority to rebuke winds and seas and trouble and anxiety. John 14, chapter 27. Remember, we are reading scriptures that's going to help us with anxiety. That's going to stop us from being so eager. We already have the faith. We already been praying, praising, working diligently, but we're eager. We want to see it happen. We're ready for the manifestation. It's going to happen. God has already shown us time and time again that he is here for us. He's our on-time God. There's no need to be eager but we're human we're going to be eager because we just ready for it to be over with we're ready to see the blessing we're ready we're ready to move forward god wants us to sit in he wants us to be humble it's some lessons that we need to learn that's going to help us in our future we have to be patient with god learn how to depend on him no matter what things will get taken away from us but god is going to restore it these are scriptures pertaining to what we can do while we wait so we're not so eager john 14 27 peace i leave with you my peace i give to you not as the world gives do i give to you let not your heart be troubled neither let them be afraid i don't know about y'all but it's something about reading the word of god when i read the word of god i just get so excited I just get so filled with faith and my anxiety goes down. So read your Bible. Read your Bible. God said he's going to leave us with peace, not as the world gives. Because the peace that the world gives, uh, you that kind of peace, it don't last a lifetime. It don't last when you're going through. The peace that God gives you is the peace that you have even when you're in the midst of a storm. That's the kind of peace that you want. When this person don't like you or that person has something bad to say about you or you're losing your job, your children are acting out, the peace that God gives you is gonna sustain you. It's gonna keep joy in your heart. So I want God's peace. I don't want the world's peace because that peace ain't about nothing. That peace is temporary. I need God's peace. It's going to last me a lifetime. It's going to last through trials and tribulations. It's going to last through my ups and my downs. It's going to last my in my day to day. I need that kind of peace, okay? And that's the peace that God gives. That's the only peace that comes from God. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 2 7. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Psalms 55 22. Cast your burdens on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. If you give your burdens to the Lord, he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. You cannot be moved. If you give your burdens to the Lord, you have a relationship with him. You are getting closer and closer to him. You cannot be moved. The righteousness, the people who believe in doing what is right, your heart is pure you cannot be moved no matter what. God is with you. You cannot be moved. You cannot fail. That's a word. It's so many of them. I don't think we don't have time to go through all of them. Y'all got to read your Bible and go through these uh, scriptures yourself. Just type in scriptures about anxiety. 
Whatever you need in your life, whether you're dealing with anger issues, temptation, whatever it is, read the scriptures, get an understanding. If you don't understand the word, look it up in the dictionary, like figure out what that word means. Get an understanding, read it out loud, get it in your spirit, read it every day, meditate on it throughout the day, pray, and you're going to get through. You're going to be just fine. You can't be moved. You can't be moved. He would never permit the righteous to be moved, doing what is right, people who do what is right, people who have a relationship with God, people who pray, pre people who repent will not be moved. God said our people don't perish because of their sins. They perish because they don't repent. Okay? So get into it. Repent of your sins. Let's read a couple more. James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Hebrews 13, 6. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? What can man do to you? The Lord is your helper. What can man do to you? Not a thing. Not a thing. The righteousness cannot be moved. God is your helper. Okay, what can any man do to you? Let's uh rebuke that anxiety in the name of Jesus. We're casting it out. God is with you. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. <sighs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean onto your own understanding and he will make straight your path. God is so good. Let's read this one. This is a, this is a kind of lengthy one, but let's read it. Matthew 5, 26 through 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not? or more value than they? And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither tore nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you a little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. I'm about to start crying in there for. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient. For the day is its own trouble. You guys worry about today. Worry about today. Do your best today. Pray, praise, faith, work diligently. Enjoy your life today. And then it has a prayer at the end. Let's read the prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. I take comfort in drawing closer to you knowing that you draw closer to me, protecting me, filling my heart and mind with that which is good and worthy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You guys, I hope you enjoyed that message. I surely did. 
We're going to get rid of this anxiety through the word of God. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Enjoy your day.